Hey, snapbacks and flapjacks, it's that time again. Give me an A. Give me a D. Give me an I. T. W. What's that spell? A ditwa? everybody, my name is John, and welcome to ADITW, A Day in the Word, the Internet's favorite Bible study. We are getting dangerously close to the end of Hebrews. Like scary close. Like final two chapters close. Like I'm starting to get emotional because it's almost done close. But let's not dwell on it. Let's dive right into Hebrews chapter 12. And I'm going to warn you, this chapter has a lot in it. So do not feel as though everything we talk about this week has to apply to your life right now. It might just be that one thing we talk about really speaks to you. That's totally fine. Just be patient. Let's start off by reading verses 1 through 3. So the purpose of this entire book and this entire study has been to help struggling Christians to find strength in their faith. And right here at the beginning of the chapter, the writer makes it clear that Jesus is who gives us that strength. Fixing your mind and heart on Jesus is the greatest way to breathe new life into a broken faith. But we also see the writer talking about how there are things that hinder us from fixing our mind and our hearts on Jesus like we're supposed to. We read how sin, it entangles us and it distracts us from placing our focus where it is supposed to be. So perhaps a question for you to reflect on today is, what is hindering me from focusing on Jesus? It might be a relationship, it might be your schoolwork, it might be an addiction of some sort. Whatever it is, if it is stealing your focus away from Jesus, then it is also hurting your faith. And therefore you should, as the writer says, throw it off. You gotta get that sin off your shoulder. So keep reflecting on that. But we got four sections to get through today, so let's keep moving. Now let's move on and read verses 4 through 13. If you were lucky enough to grow up with great parents like I did, you know that as a good parent, as hard as it might be, you know that it is a good thing to discipline your child. And this isn't something that we do out of anger, it's actually something that is done out of love because we know that it will make the child better. Like it says in verse 11, it says, No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Here, the writer is calling us to shift our mindset when it comes to discipline and to no longer look at it as just a bad thing, but to begin to look at it as an agent for growth and change in our lives. In light of that, take some time to reflect on this question. Have you ever felt as though you were being disciplined by God? If so, what did you learn from it? I know that for me in high school, I kept a lot of secrets. Secrets from my family, secrets from my friends, you name it. And I remember when I felt God sort of pressuring me to sort of let those secrets out of the bag and begin to share them with my friends and with my family and with those who loved me most. That was difficult. That was annoying. I didn't want to do it. But when I finally listened to God and I opened up and I shared about my secret struggles, I felt as though this weight just lifted off my shoulders. It was a difficult time, and like I said, it was frustrating and annoying. But now I sit here today, having been disciplined by God, to not feel as though I need to go through my struggles alone, and that helps me to not fear hardship as much as I used to. Keep on thinking about what that might be for you. And while you do, let's move on and read verses 14 through 17. quick, I just want to touch on verse 14. It says, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Essentially, what the writer is telling us here is that without a practice of holiness, 
we will struggle to enter into God's presence. And not only that, but with and not only that, but without a practice of holiness, others will struggle to see the image of God in us. And therefore we should do as the verse says, make every effort to live in peace and holiness. And so perhaps today, maybe take a little bit of time to think about where there might be discord or disunity. What relationships in your life need a little peace? And then maybe take some time also to pray for God to bring peace into those situations. Like I said, I just wanted to touch on that real quick. Let's move on down the road and let's finish up with verses 18 through 29. Read those now. So here, once again, we see the writer using a cross-reference to the Old Testament to help us to understand the new reality that Jesus brings in. Here, we're looking at Mount Sinai versus Mount Zion. Mount Sinai is where God brought Moses and the Israelites to give them the Ten Commandments. At Sinai, the law was the governing body, and there were all of these rules and regulations that everyone had to follow. Only Moses could go to the top of Mount Sinai. And if anyone else were to even touch that mountain, then they would be subject to God's wrath. But what the writer is pointing out here once again is that because of Jesus, we no longer live in the reality of Mount Sinai. Because of Jesus, we live in a new reality. We live in the reality of Zion, and Zion is very different than Sinai. At Mount Zion, we no longer have to live in fear because of Jesus. At Zion, we no longer have to follow every rule and regulation exactly because of Jesus. And at Zion, we will no longer be shaken because of Jesus. To finish our time today, why don't you take a second and just thank Jesus for all that he has accomplished for you. Thank him for being the ending of everything the Old Testament started. Thank him for turning the world upside down. And most of all, take a moment to thank Jesus for being both the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, I really do appreciate it. As always, I hope you enjoyed this episode of ADITW. Any of the questions that I asked on this episode, please comment down below and let me know your thoughts and your answers on them. Also, I would really appreciate, like I said, we're almost at the end of Hebrews. Like, we have one more chapter, and that is the end. So comment also down below. And let me know, what book do you want to do next? I know I've asked that, you know, several times. I'm going to go back to some old videos, look at your suggestions, but I'm also going to look at this one. So if you want your voice heard on where we should study next, comment down below. Last but not least, don't forget to get your orders in for the Keep Being Awesome shirts. We have both guy shirts and girl shirts, and those orders have to be finalized, I think, in like a week or something. There's not much more time. Do it now. You don't want to miss out on this. Last but not last but not least, I love you all. Last but not last but not last but not least, keep being awesome.